darkness falls, it won't prevail. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph. And my God will never fail. Oh, my God will never fail. And I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you,
Christ is my firm foundation The rock on which I stand When everything around me is shaken Oh, I've never been more glad That I put my faith in Jesus Cause he's never left He won't He won't I've still got joy in chaos I've got peace that makes no sense So I won't be going under I'm not
that will not fail. No matter what you're going through, no matter where you've been, he will always trust, he will always be the one you can trust in. God, we praise you today. We thank you. I thank you that you are a firm foundation. You are a powerful God. Lord, we don't have to look to this world or anything inside of us or anything around us, but God, you are our firm foundation. And I thank you that we can serve a mighty, holy, powerful God that no matter what we need, you are our source. You are our provider and you are the holy king who we can praise and worship. God, I thank you today and I worship you and I thank you for loving us so much, God, that we can trust in you. I thank you that we can depend on you and we can lean on you in all things. We praise you and we honor you today, God. I thank you. Can you praise him as you're seated, church? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We are going to share some announcements with you right now, if you will turn your attention to the screen. Good morning, Beaufort Church of God. I am Pastor Manny. This is my beautiful wife. I'm Priscilla. And we want to go over some quick announcements. Pastor Joey has started a sermon series for Valentine's Day. He started and he recommended a book called The Five, Five Love Languages. So if you guys want to get that book, I highly recommend it. It is an amazing book for your marriage. And also for those who aren't married, I still recommend reading that book so that way you know how to communicate once you're in that position in your life for marriage. But we also want to talk about connections. Listen, but first we need to interrupt this this broadcast because there's an announcement coming up regarding that sermon series. We're not really sure what's going to happen, but we have something coming up about it. So be aware and awaiting of this information on Facebook. Keep your eye on and social, social media. media. Yes. And second, we have our connections group. Um, every single connection group meets uh, once a month and we get together and we have a meal or we or we just go to the to the uh, ministry center and we have a game day or something but we get together and it get, gives us the opportunity to get to know our family in Christ and have a great time yes, to get to know each other and we're all around the city and outside the city we uh, ourselves host one outside of Winder in Bethlehem and if you guys are around that area we welcome you to ours and it's on Facebook. You can find it on the Buford Church of God page on Facebook. We also have ones all around. So whatever your age is, whatever your 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 city you live in, we welcome you to do that. So we have a place for you at our table. Yes, amen. But also, we on one more last announcement. We're doing a play for Easter. The Christmas play was amazing. Amazing. It was awesome. And uh, we're doing an Easter one. So we just had an audition this past Wednesday. We're doing another two. I think one's happening today. So if you want to be a part of that and you want to be part of these amazing plays that the Duncans and, and everybody that is a part of, I would highly recommend it. These plays are amazing. They're high production. They're doing a great job. Are you going to dress up? I probably will have to. Yay! I think I'm be a soldier. But you guys, enjoy the service. We love you. God bless. Amen. I love them. You guys are awesome. <laughs> Give them a shout out. Amen. So we're excited about our Easter play, and Lauren and Jared Duncan wave at me. All right, if you have questions about the play, you can see them after church and get more information about that. But we hope that you will make plans to be here and also get involved where you can. Even if you say, I can't be a part of, I don't know how to act, I don't know how to get in a play, but you can help us build a prop, you can help us gather items, all kinds of things. We need all kinds of volunteers for this play. So I encourage you to be a part of that and get involved. I want to worship God in our giving right now. And Galatians, yeah, let's give God a hand because he is awesome and he's been our provider. Amen. Amen. Galatians 6.2, it says, carry one another's burdens. And in this way, you fulfill the law of Christ. And as many, as many of you know, we went to Romania and Ukraine this year. And our trip, it kind of looked a little different. It was the first time that uh, Josiah and I had been back in a couple of years. And we stayed in Romania with Josh and Melinda Brown. We had a team with us this year, and it was so exciting. And I've shared about that last week and, and the Wednesday before. But I wanted to share today a little bit about Pastor Joey and Coleman's trip, Coleman Bailey. They went across the border to Ukraine. And I thought about this scripture as I thought about their trip because, you know, we don't experience war in our day-to-day -day life. And so I think sometimes it's so far away and there's not a lot of information about it that we may not realize the trauma 
and the devastation that you go through in those moments. You're talking about children who may have lost their parents. They may not feel like they know where their next meal's coming from. They may not feel like they have shoes to wear or clothes to wear or places to go. They feel like they, they're going to have to run in a bomb shelter because there's air raids all the time in those areas. But I've watched as I saw the pictures, and I wanted to share these with you today because I watched as they... Coleman and Joey went on this trip and they would set up these tables full of toys and these kids would come and just get to get their pick of what they wanted and then they got on brand new shoes and all the kids were trying them on because they were cool Nike shoes and Adidas shoes and they wanted these certain kinds and they had to really check the kids shoes because they would just wear them no matter if they were cramming their foot in or they were five sizes too big <laughs> so, but they got all the kids all those toys and all those shoes. And I thought, that's, that's carrying their burden. Because for one moment, one special moment in that day, those kids weren't worried about an air raid. They weren't worried about where their food was coming from. They weren't worried about mom and dad. They were having the joy of the season that we, we take for granted sometimes. But in that moment, they were able to carry the burdens for those families, for those kids, and for those people that worked in those orphanages. And I want to say, church, you did that. You sent the funds. You sent your pastor and supported them to go and take those gifts. So you, in turn, carried those burdens for them. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you for carrying the burden because you're doing what Christ has told us to do. And I encourage you in this new year, find new ways. Say, God, where do you want me to carry somebody's burden today? Is it in this offering? Is it in giving tithes consistently? Where do you want me to help somebody carry the burden that you've placed in their life so that their load is just a little easier? Let's pray. God, I thank you. I thank you that you are a great big God. Lord, and you said if we have burdens, God, just to come to you and you'd help us carry them. And you provide people in our lives to help carry those burdens. And I thank you for that. And I thank you also that you're the kind of God, Lord, you pour out blessings on us. So many that we can't hold on to. But you also invite us to join you in what you're doing all around the world to build your kingdom. And you just say, come, join me and watch what I'll do in your life. And I thank you for the givers in this house who are ready to do your kingdom work. And I pray you'd bless them today. I pray you'd anoint them in more ways to give to your kingdom that they would be amazed at what kind of vessels they can become when they just say, God, I'm willing. I thank you for this great church. I pray you'd help us always be good stewards of what you bring here. And I pray with every word we say, every deed we do, and every gift we bring, God, I pray it wouldn't bring us glory, but it would shout glory to your name. In Jesus' name, amen. speak his name right now I just want to speak the name of Jesus till every dark addiction starts to break declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus your name is power your name is healing, your name is life, break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. Come on, sing it big and loud right now. And I just want to speak the name. Over fear and all anxiety To every soul To every soul held captive by depression oh, I speak Jesus Your name is power Your name is healing 
mountains and Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name. Jesus. Jesus in the streets Jesus in the darkness Oh, Jesus for my family I speak the holy name Oh, Jesus Come on Shout Jesus from the mountains Jesus in the streets Jesus in the streets Jesus in the darkness
our hands and praise that name this morning. Thank you, Jesus. We praise your name. Yeah. 
Just say his name. No other name under heaven whereby men can be saved except at the name of Jesus. At that name, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. Sweet Jesus, I praise you today. I magnify you. I exalt you in this house. For you are great and greatly to be praised. Fill this house with your glory. Let your power be revealed among us. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Would you give the Lord a loud, thunderous hand clap of praise today? Amen, amen, amen. Remain standing with me, please, for the reading of God's Word, Judges chapter 13. We're still in our sermon series, Make Marriage Great Again. And this is a bit unusual for me because I didn't have this couple in mind. When I started looking for couples in the Scripture that I could use to exemplify great marriage... It became difficult because I had certain criteria that excluded a significant number of marriages in the Bible, one of which was I wanted them to be monogamous. If you don't know what that word means, it means they didn't have more than one wife. And so when I went through the scriptures, I I didn't want to name marriages that were a little awkward and weird to discuss because polygamy is illegal in the United States for a lot of good reasons and it's forbidden to the church in the New Testament. Jesus is the one that returned marriage to a rightful place when he declared it wasn't so in the beginning. You're starting your life with legalism. I start with the Garden of Eden. And he declared that those marriages would be exemplified as the great ones in Scripture. And so it became tough for me to find those passages. But I found one in Judges 13. Would you take the word of God? Hold the scriptures close to your heart. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the opportunity to worship and read and hear your word. And I ask you, God, that you would help me pay attention. Help me bury this word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Would you stretch your hands toward me, Heavenly Father? Anoint me to preach. Let your grace and favor shine on me. Let your power be revealed in me today. In Jesus' name. Please remain standing. I'm going to read quite a few verses, so please be patient as I go through these chapters. Heavenly Father, anoint this word. Look at verse 2. Judges 13, starting with verse 2. Now there was a certain man from Zorah of the family of the Danites whose name was Manoah. His wife was barren and had no children. And the angel of the Lord appeared to the woman. Remember that. And said to her, Indeed, now you are barren and have borne no children, but you shall conceive and bear a son. Now, therefore, please be careful not to drink wine or similar drink and not to eat anything unclean. For behold, you shall conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come upon his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb. He shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. So the woman came and told her husband. Look at verse 8. Then Manoah prayed to the Lord and said, Oh, my Lord, please let the man of God whom you sent to us come again to us and teach what we shall do for the child who will be born. And God listened to the voice of Manoah. And the angel of God came to the woman again as she was sitting in the field, but Manoah, Manoah, her husband, was not with her. Then the woman ran in haste, told her husband, said to him, Look, the man who came to me the other day has just now appeared to me again. So Manoah arose and followed his wife. 
When he came to the man of God, he said to him, Are you the man who spoke to this woman? And he said, I am. Then Manoah said to the angel of the Lord, Look at verse 15. Please let us detain you. And, and we will give you food. We want to feed for you. Prepare a goat for you. And the angel of the Lord said to Manoah, Though you detain me, I will not eat your food. But if you offer a burnt offering, offer it to the Lord. For Manoah did not know that this was the angel of the Lord. Then Manoah said to the angel of the Lord, What is your name? That when your words come to pass, we may honor you. And the angel of the Lord said to him, Why do you ask my name? Seeing it is wonderful. So Manoah took the young goat with the grain offering and offered upon the rock of the Lord. And then the man of God did a wonderful thing. While Manoah and his wife looked on, it happened as the flame went up toward heaven from the altar. The angel of the Lord went into the fire and ascended in the flame of the altar. When Manoah and his wife saw this, they fell on their faces to the ground, glorifying God. Say amen at the reading of God's word. Praise God. This is a great story. I can't wait to dive in it. Before I do, I want to recommend another book. Last week, we had a purple book with pink letters on it. And I realized then I lost almost all the men in the house. said, I'm not reading that book. There's no way I'm going to. They do have a book just for men because I have found out half the problems in a marriage are men. <laughs> and if you want to fix your marriage, sometimes you don't have to fix your marriage. You just have to fix you. Let me tell you something about arguments. You ready for this, husbands and wives? Listen to me. Sometimes it's not 50-50. We always try and look for compromise. You know, I'll walk your way, you walk mine, we'll meet in the middle. Sometimes it's all you. Okay, get quiet on me. That's all right. Sometimes you want them to kind of get towards you when you the one messed everything up. And so when you have a husband and a wife in an argument, Fellas, listen to me. Sometimes it's all you. And this book is one of the greatest influences in my life. I love this book, Wild at Heart, because it captures the essence of something that I found frustrating about Christianity, especially in America. It's made for women. Too many times we construct our faith statements so that it's very girly and very feminine. And I'm not trying to throw girls under the bus, but there's boys here too. And I think there's a, a, a faith that's big enough for all of us. And for you to get saved does not mean you have to check your man card at the church door. God wants you to be what he created you to be. And so this book by John Eldridge, titled Wild at Heart, is one of the great reads of my life. And I encourage you. And let, next week we'll have a recommendation for the ladies. But the ladies are probably already thinking about the love language book I recommended last week. Men, it's a little tougher to get those things into your hands, but this is a good one. Let's dive into this great story of Samson's mom and dad. I, I was rebuked by God as I made the boast I could not find very many grand or great marriages in the Bible. And slowly over time, the Lord has unfolded a number of marriages that I happen to have overlooked. This is one of them. And I had intended this week to talk about Adam and Eve, and I, I want to get back to them. But as I was studying for Adam and Eve, the Lord took me to this passage, and I, I was going to add it as a point in the passage of the story of Adam and Eve. But then God focused my attention and said, look at this. And as I started to look at this, several things jumped off the page at me. And I think the first thing that hit me is this is the only other woman in the Bible who had an angelic visit by herself. There's only one other woman in the Bible that had an angelic visit, and that is the mother of Christ. The angel of the Lord came to the woman. And I want this to be loud, long, and clear in this house. The feminist is wrong about Christianity. We are not anti-woman. Christianity has been the liberation of women. The only people who have used Scripture to exercise some means of control over those that are around them are those who have misused the passages of the Bible. God never intended for the woman to be silent in her faith statement to God. Somebody talk to me. Came and visited this woman and when he spoke to her he said you're barren you have no children 
God has a terrible way of making sure that you know he knows. Lest while you're talking to God, you think he's talking to somebody else. I know who you are. I know what you've been whining about. I know what you're concerned about. I know the real truth. God will always start his conversation with you with perhaps the most uncomfortable truth about you. And the reason you don't want to get close to God is you can't handle the truth. Deep down, you don't want to talk about it. You're barren. You have no children. But the Lord has heard your prayer. You're going to have a child. It's going to be an unusual child. and You're going to have to do this just right. Don't mess it up. There's a lot of rules for this baby. Because this child will deliver my people. Now we all know that the child's name would be Samson. So they were instructed by God to host this presence and fulfill these commandments that were given. She goes back and tells her husband, I like what he did. He heard the words of his wife and he went to the prayer closet. And he said, oh God, send him back. Now, I want you to remember, we'll get to this in just a few moments. I don't want to throw away too many punchlines in the beginning of the sermon, but what do you know the name of this individual to be? What did the Bible say? My name is Wonderful. I believe it's high time that the people of God get in the prayer closets and say, God, send Wonderful back to my house. Heavenly Father, I don't want to just read about it. I I don't want to just hear my wife testify about it. I need wonderful back in the altars of my home. I want wonderful back in my church. I want wonderful back in my heart. I want wonderful back in this house. Oh, God, send it back. Can I get a heart cry from the church that would say, Heavenly Father, one more time, come back to my house. One word isn't enough. I don't want to just hear them testify about it. And the Bible says that God heard his prayer. Now, I do want to point out that when the angel did come back, he came back to her. Isn't it terrible when you have jealousy in a house? Worried about who gets the visit. Worried about who gets the word. The unusual thing about this woman is that she is a hero amongst the Hebrews. She is not a nameless, faceless woman in their history. They reckon her to be Hazel Panai, who is mentioned in 1 Chronicles chapter 4 as a daughter of the tribe of Judah. The Hebrews teach her as a woman of great faith and studied understanding. There's great reasons for it. I don't have time to go into it. But it is an interesting read that this woman is perceived to be greater than her husband in the spirit. That oftentimes can create difficulty in the house when the woman... Is closer to God than he is. He'd rather just stay home and be his own dominant self than go to the house of God where he's got to watch his wife be baptized with the Holy Ghost. And sometimes it's vice versa. She gets jealous of him. She wants him to get saved. She just didn't want him getting called to preach. Let me straighten this pulpit out. I think there's a lot of jealousy in homes that will split that home. You better be careful when you're in competition with those closest to you as to who gets the word. Angel came back to her. What did she do? The Bible says she stood up and ran with haste to go get her husband. And I think there's too many people. You're so worried about getting yours, you forget about them. But I want somebody in this house to go home and bring them back. 
I believe that God gives you the ability and the anointing to go back to the house and get everybody in that house and bring them to the altar so that they can experience the glory of God that's been revealed to you. Somebody help me praise the Lord in this place. Hallelujah. When God her husband, hey, come, he's back. Come and see him. And the Bible says he followed her. It is an unusual story in how the Bible repeatedly uses phrases to promote the authority of this woman in the spirit. But thanks be unto God, she had a good husband. She didn't care where God showed up. The only thing he cared about is whether or not he could get to Jesus. And I think there's a time in your life when you say, you know what? If you want to talk to my wife, you talk to my wife. You want to talk to my children, you talk to my children. The only thing I'm asking is don't pass me by. And baby, if you love me enough, when he shows up, come get me so that I may see him too. I believe that God is going to put on this house that angel called Wonderful. And I think God is going to put an anointing on this house of Hazel Ponai. I believe that the wonderful revelation of God is coming to Buford Church of God and he's going to give you the anointing of this mama to go back to your house and bring everybody that's in your house to the presence of God. Does anybody want that favor in your life today? <laughs> Hallelujah! As El Ponai goes back to Manoah, says he's here. And I love what Manoah does when he gets there. Please tell us, what are you talking about? How am I going to raise this baby? I don't want to mess this up. Slowly the story unfolds. And then I like the way Manoah answered the angel. He said, wait a minute. Don't leave. The Bible says he restrained him to stay. Oh, please, daddy, come on. You've, you've been good at getting everybody else to come by the house. You, Amazon shows up every day. We work so hard to be a good host to different family members. We want to be hospitable if we own a business. But is there somebody left in the church today that can say, Heavenly Father, don't leave the house. I want a church. Yes, I want it friendly. I want the, the, the temperature right. I want the sound right. I, I want the parking right. I want everybody to be comfortable. But at the end of the day, oh God, we didn't show up for each other. Let me make a meal for you. Why don't you sit down at the table and let me serve you for a minute. For the Bible says they that wait upon the Lord, he'll renew their strength. They'll mount up with wings as eagles and run and not be weary and walk and not faint. I came into the house of God to cook a meal for him. I felt the Holy Ghost say to me while I was reading these verses. He said, you can't impress me. But you can bless me. Somebody take some time right now and bless the Lord. Oh, my soul and all that is in me, bless his holy name. I feel the Holy Ghost coming down in this house right now and I sense God. May not be able to impress him, but I can still bless him. What's your name? I like what the angel said. I'm not going to tell you my name. I'm not going to eat your food. Why would I tell you my name? My name is Wonderful. You know the first time that word was used in the Bible? There was a woman barren in the book of Genesis. And when she heard that she was going to have a baby, she laughed. And the angel of God said, is anything too wonderful? For God. That word was used again when Moses had the voice of the people crying out in desperation unto God. And God said, stand still and see the wonderful works of my hands. Paul rehearses that same thing. That he will do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we could ever ask or think. My name is beyond I am, I am. My name is wonderful. I'm not, I'll tell you what you do. Don't make me eat the food. Just make a sacrifice to the Lord. And as they sacrificed to God, 
the Bible says that the angel did something wonderful. The Bible says he went into the flame and ascended to the Father. Letting us know that this was Jesus. Because the Bible says that God inhabits the praises of his people. You want God to be in your life? Build a flame of worship on the altar of your life. You want Jesus to come down? He's still walking in the fire. He's still the one that walks on water. You have to lift up the water and fire of the worship that's in your heart. And God inhabits those praises. The fire of worship creates a conduit from here to glory. Angels ascend and descend on the Jacob's ladder of your own praise and intentions. If you want the word of God, you've got to bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is in him. Bless his holy name. So I ask you a question today. Is his name wonderful to you? What a beautiful name it is. His name is wonderful. Counselor, Prince of Peace, Mighty God, Holy One, Lamb of God, Lord God Almighty. He's the Lion of the tribe of Judah. He's the Root of David. He's the Word of Life. He's the Author of Salvation. He's the Way, the Day Spring, the Lord All. He's the I Am. He's the Chief Cornerstone. He's a Wheel Within a Wheel. He's the Lily of the Valley. He's a Stream in a Desert. He's the One Walking In. When everybody else walks out, He still walks on water. He heals my body. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Somebody help me glorify God in this place. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Look at your neighbor if they're not worshiping and say, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Man, he's in the house. Pastor, I, I like to worship quiet. Well, you hadn't met him yet. Well, you don't understand my personality. No, but I do understand his personality. And if you're going to bless God, you got to bless God his way. Listen, this isn't Burger King. He, you know, he's not going to do it your way. When God comes down, you praise him as he is worthy to be praised. I didn't invent the shout, God did. I didn't invent clapping hands, God did. God said clap your hands, all your people, and shout unto God with the voice of triumph. The Lord is the one that said amen. God gave you two arms to lift to him, and the Bible says let the uplifting of my hands be like the evening sacrifice. 2,000 years ago, he lifted his hands for you. So the least you can do on a Sunday morning is take just a little bit of energy and put your hand in the air and magnify a king who gave his life for you. 2,000 years ago, he shouted for you and the least you can do. Hallelujah. I have preachers all the time. They, they, they love to preach at Buford. And, and they love to drive this car. It's like driving a Corvette when you've been stuck in a little Fiat or something. And so they come here and they like to drive the car. They're like, man, I like the way the church shouts. I like the way they worship. It's because of teaching like this. Worship is a discipline. If you want God's glory in your life, you better learn to build a fire. And you better have some sacrifice on it. And the Bible says that when that angel ascended to God, such a beautiful sentence, the Bible says they fell on their face, glorified God. Mia, will you come stand with me for a moment? You want to make a marriage great? This is how you do it. You worship together.
Thank you for the wonderful presence of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the baptism and presence of your fire. Let your glory be revealed. Don't let your babies go through life and the only shout they hear is mine. Don't let your babies go through life and the only repentance they hear is mine. When we get into the presence of the Lord in this house, don't stare at me like a long-faced mule looking at a new gate. <laughs> is that bad? <laughs> I'll let you go down before I get I don't want you blamed for what's about to happen. <laughs> Dive in. Just try it. I know, Pastor, I wasn't raised this way. We can tell. <laughs> Just say his name. Hallelujah. Try a little hallelujah right quick. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Glory to God. <laughs> holy, holy, holy is the Lord God. Oh, God, I praise you. I Build this fire and the devil get out of my house. Answer my, he touched my body. He healed my mind. Save me. Praise him. You want your marriage great again? You better learn to pray again together. Call on God's name. I have terrible news. That baby God gave him turned out to be a knucklehead. Broke all the rules, Bob. Every one of them. Terrible friendships, relationships. Traveled all over. Couldn't get him to stay home. Constantly into mischief and trouble. Broke their hearts. Let me tell you something, parents who are carrying guilt because your baby didn't turn out right. These folks were taught by God himself. They meticulously kept all the rules. They did everything right. They prayed together and it still went wrong with the child. Stop thinking that everything goes perfect just because you do the right thing. But when that baby was facing death, when Samson had wasted his life, come join me, Josiah. When Samson had spent his energy pursuing all the wrong things and found himself imprisoned, broken, and devastated because of his decisions, I can't help but believe that in those last moments he remembered that God is the one that brought him into this world. In those last moments, the words of God came ringing true train them up in the way they should go and when they're old they won't depart from it I want faith to be born in the house today over every wayward daughter over every wayward son somebody help me pray mama they're coming home you may not see it you may not know about it but we have a promise that when you build your marriage on the rock of Jesus Christ that faith will be like a hook in their jaw and they won't be able to get away from it. Samson spent all his life chasing the wrong dreams. Samson spent his whole life doing the wrong things, spending his spiritual energy chasing the wrong people. But all oh, on that day of his grand coronation, he said to God the words that I want you to say in this house. The same words his daddy said. One more time. I didn't think of that till right then. That's what his dad said. That's what his daddy said. When the angel left, he prayed all night. One more time. Oh, I feel it. One more time, oh God. Send wonderful back to this house. Send faith back to this house.
Let the glory of God fill our lives, oh God, one more time. And Samson, in the declining shadows of a wasted day, he cries out to God, restore. One more time. And I feel like on that day when he put his hands on the columns of Dagon's temple. When he put his hands on the columns of that foreign God. I believe he was singing a song a lot like this one. Sing it, son. Seems like all I could see was the struggle. Haunted by ghosts that lived in my past Bound up in the shackles of all my failures Wondering how long is this gonna last Then you look at this prisoner and say to me, son, stop fighting a fight that's already been won. I am redeemed. You set me heavy chains, wipe away every stain, cause I'm not who I used to be, I am redeemed. If you need to get somebody and bring them to the altar, maybe they're not even here, come to the altar. If they're sitting with you, bring them to the altar. Let's get down in the glory of God today. I believe the Lord has a plan for every heart, every home, every marriage, every son, every daughter. I believe God has a purpose for your life. And I know that God has an anointing. I want as many of you that will just allow the Spirit of God to wash over this congregation for a few minutes. Sing that second verse for us, son. And all my life I have been called on a word. Named by the voice of my shame and regret But when I hear you whisper Child, lift up your head I remember, oh God, you're not done with me yet I am redeemed Set me free So I'll shake off these heavy chains Wipe away every stain Cause I'm not who I used to be I am redeemed I am redeemed set me free so I'll shake off these heavy chains wipe away every stain cause I'm not who I used to be I am redeemed Heavenly Father, I ask you for the anointing of Hazel Ponai to rest on the women of this house. And I ask you, God, that you'd send an angel to them. I pray, Lord, the Spirit of God would go to them and they would recognize that in the last days that sons and daughters will prophesy. I pray, God, that the hospitality of Manoah would rest on the hearts of these men that they wouldn't be satisfied just hearing about somebody else getting a word from God, but those men would fight for the house. 
stay up all night and then run to him and then try and get him to stay offer food whatever they got to offer Heavenly Father make up our minds I'm going to have a relationship with God oh sweet Jesus and I pray for all the Samsons in the house all those who've drifted from God I pray Lord that you wouldn't just redeem one you'd save them all right now in the name of Jesus if there's enough lost people in your family that if they all started getting saved there's not enough room in this church to hold them I want you to throw your hands up because I want God to anoint you we can have revival when you have revival I ask you God to save their whole house right now in the name of Jesus I pray Lord they'd be sitting here and wouldn't even know that she's coming she didn't call them she didn't tell them they'll be sitting here in a worship service and they'll watch their daughter run down the aisle and come into the old fashioned altars of the Buford Church of God and be saved in the name of Jesus let that boy walk in Heavenly Father let him drift down center aisle and find his way to the glory of the cross Praise you, God. Now, we've got a lot of praying we're going to do. I'm going to open the altars. I guess, technically, I guess. I don't know what that means around here anymore. <laughs> we just open the altars anytime we get a chance. But I, I know there's going to be some lingering in the altars. And my wife and I, the Bible says, if any two will agree is touching anything, we can ask what we will and it shall be done. And my wife and I, we agree. We agree not just in prayer, we agree in life. We are partners. We are in covenant with each other. And so when my wife and I, we pray for you, we lay our hands on you. There's like double anointing in that kind of prayer. And so after I finish this salvation prayer and this blessing, I'm going to open the altars for anyone who would let my wife and I lay our hands on you and ask God to touch your life. Now I must tell you that that part of the service is reasonably quiet. If you're expecting something super demonstrative at that moment, it's really not about that. We're very quiet, very respectful, and we have to hurry because there's typically a lot of us. And we like to get to everybody. I stay here until the last one's finished praying. And I believe God's gifted us with a great church that knows how to pray. I do want to ask for a double anointing. On Alex and Rebecca Wanless, our new student ministries pastor. Alex, uh, bring Rebecca. Come stand beside me, if you will. Next Sunday, he's going to be preaching to you. And he's going to be sharing the word that God has on his heart. And I want you to stretch your hands toward them before I open the altars for the salvation and the laying on of hands. Heavenly Father, I pray for Alex and Rebecca. And I pray, God, that next week the glory of God would shine in their hearts and minds. And I ask you, Lord, to wring him out like an anointed cloth. Lord, when, when he gets the keys to this Corvette, I ask you, God, help him drive it like he stole it. Run every stop sign. Use him for your glory in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Alex. If you're lost, you don't know God, you're not right with him. I have good news for you. We found blood that pardons and we have found stripes that heal. You don't have to go to hell. I want to lead you in a prayer. As Jesus taught his disciples to pray, I believe that God has given me authority to teach you a prayer. And I want to lead you in this prayer today. I want all of us to say it together. Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I'm so sorry. I'm coming home. I know you came. I know you lived and died for me. I know you rose from the dead. And I know you're coming back. And I don't want to be left out. So please, come into my heart. I felt that. Save my soul. Help me be a Christian. In Jesus' name.
If you prayed that prayer and you're watching me online, please chat into the live stream. I prayed that prayer. Even if it's during the week, we try and keep a check on that. If you're watching me on television, please contact the church with the information that's on your screen. I'd like to hear from you. If you're in the house and you weren't right before you got here, but you're right now, come to the altar and say it loud enough for me to hear. I prayed that prayer. I want to bear witness with that testimony today. Before I open these altars, let me bless you. May you be blessed in the city and blessed in the field. Blessed when you rise and when you lay down at night. May the Lord bless you and keep you and turn his countenance towards you and be gracious to you. Make his face shine on you and give you peace. Beauty for ashes and the oil of joy for mourning. A garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. (laughs) May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm on your face and the rains fall softly on your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the hollow of his hand. God bless you. I love you. I'll see you next Sunday.